Hello, in this presentation I will talk about kinematic control of robot manipulators with null space policies. This presentation will focus on understanding the problem that arises when a movement acts in a direction that it is in the null space of the Jacobian matrix. So, we will first do a brief review of kinematic control with the pseudo-inverse of the Jacobian. Later, I will explain how a policy that resides in the null space of the main task will not affect to it by definition. Finally, I will propose the use of artificial potential fields as a possible technique to compute a policy that lies in the null space of a task, so that the robot tries to reach a given configuration. Indeed, we will see how, thanks to this technique, we can solve common issues of kinematic control at singularities. As we saw in a previous presentation, the kinematic control of robots can be implemented by means of a proportional control law, which corrects the position and orientation error between the reference and the end effector, including a feedforward term of the reference velocity. To convert the variables in the workspace to uh, the joint space, we will use the pseudo inverse of the Jacobian matrix, which, as we saw previously, does not have to be a square matrix, since its dimensions depend on the degrees of freedom that the robot has and the dimensions of the task space. The pseudo inverse can be computed even when the robot is at a singularity when using regularization techniques. This is something that we discussed also in a previous video. However, there might be additional issues if the right side term that multiplies the pseudo inverse lies in the null space of the robot Jacobian. In those cases, the robot will not move and will get trapped in that configuration unless the reference velocity changes. This is precisely what happens in this example. Here we can see a coplanar robot with three degrees of freedom that it is initially in a configuration with all links fully extended. This configuration it is obviously singular. For instance, if the reference implies a trajectory moving downwards during the first 5 seconds and then moves to the right for another 5 seconds. In that case, we can see that the robot cannot follow the trajectory for the first part, because the reference velocity vector lies in null space of the robot Jacobian. Indeed, when the reference speed points to the right, it, is no, long, it no longer belongs to the null space of set matrix and the robot begins to follow the trajectory and eventually manages to escape from the singularity. This example has been obviously created to show the issues that can arise when implementing a kinematic controller without considering null space policies. Fortunately, the robot is redundant since the task involves following a 2D path, while the robot has 3 degrees of freedom, which means that we have multiple options to solve this problem while still fulfilling the task. In redundant robots, we can add any policy, say T, that belongs to the null space of the Jacobian matrix that will not modify the main task. This means that, on the one hand, we can compute a policy pi that fulfills the main task to follow a given trajectory. Then, if we add another policy that belongs to the null space of the Jacobian, this new policy will not modify the velocities of the end effector, at least those that are considered as part of the task. Now the question that naturally arises is which other policy should we use? Traditionally, we seek for solutions avoiding singularities or solutions avoiding joint limits or obstacles. As long as we have more degrees of freedom in the robot than in the task, we can use those extra degrees of freedom to fulfill the secondary task. For instance, we can use a policy based on artificial potential fields. This is a well-known technique in robotics that I explain in another presentation. See the link included in the video description. This method defines a potential function so that a given configuration is an attractor. That is, the robot must try to reach set configuration and other regions are repulsive, that is, the robot must try to avoid them, such as obstacles. Later, I will show an example of 
how we could define this potential function. The negative gradient of the potential function allows us to move in a direction that points towards the minimum of the function, which is our ultimate goal. In order to not to interfere with the main task, this gradient will be multiplied with a projection matrix that will ensure that the vector t belongs to the null space of j, as indicated here. By combining both control policies, we can establish a kinematic control law that follows a given trajectory and at the same time tries to minimize a certain potential function, but as a secondary task. For example, an attractive potential function towards a given configuration Q star could be a quadratic function that penalizes the distance in the configuration space between the robot configuration and the target configuration. Its gradient would simply be the difference between the two vectors multiplied by a parameter epsilon a that defines the gain that regulates how fast or slow we want to convert to that configuration. So, following with the previous example, we have now implemented a controller that must follow the same path but also tends to a given configuration Q star, shown in the figure at the bottom. As we can see, the robot is now capable of following the reference trajectory even at the first part of the trajectory. In this particular example, we can see how the robot not only fulfills the main task but also tends to the target configuration. As a consequence, joint trajectories tend to the target ones. In the figure on the right, we show uh, the end effector trajectory. This is the correct end effector trajectory if we compare to the previous example, which was an incorrect uh, end effector trajectory. Here we see another example of how to solve the same task, but in this case we use a different reference configuration. We can see now that the joint trajectories are completely different, but the end effector trajectories remain the same, exactly the same. We can see that in this case the robot tends to mimic the target configuration while following the trajectory. It is clear then that we have multiple options to solve the same problem. Here we have another example. Uh, we have uh, selected a different attractive configuration. Again, the end effector trajectories are the same, but the joint trajectories are different and take values close to the desired uh, attractive configuration. In this fourth example, we see again the robot is able to follow the trajectory and tends to a different uh, attractive configuration, as shown in the figure below. In this presentation, I have presented a kinematic controller for robot manipulators, including neural space policies. In the next video, I will explain how to avoid obstacles following the same ideas. Thank you very much.